G'day guys, back again in my shed with BC. I've got a couple of high speed steel tools up for a look today. This particular drill is a half inch stub drill made by Natchi that I purchased back in the late 1980s. And I can't stress enough the story about buying good quality tools. You can see it's got a very, very small notch to thin the web at the front there. And you can just start to see the cutting edge. And when a mate of mine, Dallas, was using it, a a couple of weeks ago he said, did I just sharpen that drill? He says it's cutting beautifully. The story is that that drill has never been sharpened since the factory. And it has done hundreds and hundreds of holes. You can just see the shiny cutting edge now. Out towards the, the outer lip. And it's probably going to be due for a sharpen soon. But if you're getting 12 or 20 or 30 holes out of a sharp drill, you've got a piece of crap. You've got a turd with a shank. If you're getting hundreds and hundreds of holes per sharpening, you've got a good high-speed steel tool. And that's what you should aim for. Good tools give you very, very good performance and value for money. But I find it's astounding. I've used it both in my lathe and the mill and a bit in the drill press or the radial arm. And it's done a hell of a lot of work. You don't get that out of cheap rubbish. Now we'll swing across to this tool. This is a 15 mil annular cutter been brought in by a customer you can see the cutting edge is just going bright and he's smart enough to bring it into me when there's only a little bit of wear there and I'm not a crash tooth or something like that I've sharpened this cutter before I can tell by the geometry of it and see if we can get the light a little bit better now this is a uh, cheaper cutter from one of the big box shops and once again it's a story of only getting 20 or 30 holes in between sharpening. Well, this particular tool is running in stainless steel, and as the drilling machine is only single speed, he's running at about 2.2 times the speed you should for 304 stainless, and that contributes to the very, very short life. But in steel, you would expect out of a good cutter, 2 to 250 holes per sharpen. The cheap shop uh, cutters, you might get 20 or 30, so you're just getting what you pay for. The old story. I'm now going to put the high performance grinding wheel up on the TNC grinder and we'll grind this tool and see just how much a $100 grinding wheel can do. Back soon. Here we are back on the Rong Fu tool and cutter grinder. I'll explain once again a little bit about the setup and we'll give this high performance grinding wheel a bit of a try out. The overhead indexer comes from an air bearing spindle unit I have that can do flutes on uh, end mills but it serves me more pur purpose here as I get more of these cutters to sharpen. It's a hell of a good affair. Uh, adjustable at the back here. Uh, this micrometer adjustment moves the finger up and down and it's got uh, thousands marked off on it and it's got an old jigsaw blade as the actual indexer. It's a little bit complex to build as it's a left hand thread and the screw goes into a groove to stop it rotating. One of the best things we did was slot the mounting hole and open end it. That makes it very, very easy to undo the clamp and position it in the flute of the cutter where you can get it to be nice and solid so you can't spring the indexing finger around. Now that it's not engaged with the grinding wheel, you can see that it indexes very freely. Okay, this is the cutter I showed earlier with just a little bit off the cutting edge. And this is the new high performance wheel. Now, out of the factory, I haven't dressed this wheel and haven't done anything but tighten it up. The presentation of the wheel is beautiful. There's two uh, paper blotters to use with the wheel to clamp it in properly. And one thing I did notice is the wheel is dressed on the inside of the face. So only about the outer three millimeters will do the grinding. So there's a little bit of a hint for the future. I'll do that with a uh, dressing stick that I have. If it's out of true badly, I will dress it, but I'm hoping that it's good enough. The finish on the wheel looks like it's been dressed very, very well. It might run good enough. So I'll power the unit up, uh, set it up to start grinding, and then bring you back. Now I've brought you in close for some of the grinding sequence. I have brought the tool up to the job. Uh, and made a couple of passes. First thing I'll say is this wheel is running so 
concentric and true, I'm really, really happy with it. But it's got this real sharp zing to it. And man, it takes a couple of cow off the teeth like nothing on earth. I think I might have got the money for it. But here we go. A couple of passes around with the cut. Then a couple of pound more. Now I don't know if you're seeing it as good as me. I might bring the camera down a little bit, but even the sparks coming off it are completely different. I'll just bring it down a touch and go in a little bit more. Wow, that is unbelievable. A little bit more to go and I can swing the cutter around. Okay, I'll swing the cutter around, take your off camera for a sec. And now I've indexed the cutter around to do the outside facets. I'll wind in a couple more foul and we'll see how the wheel cuts. Very, very impressed with this. And there were a few times I've got value for money. We'll feed a bit more. Get my torch over and have a look at that shortly. You can see that it hasn't been um, aligned 100% concentric. I'd say I'm about a thou out, and I'm not going to bother to dress it. It's just, oh, no, it's just colouring most of the way around. Yeah, it's running very evenly, but one thing I'll say straight up is this grinding wheel is cutting without effort. Um, none of the teeth showed any signs of overheating or even heating up at all. No smoke off the cutting fluid that remains there, which are all signs that the previous wheels were running a hell of a lot hotter. Uh, I'll have to grind a lot more cutters before I can give a definitive answer, but from the little bit I've seen so far, man, that is one really good grinding wheel. And yes, the machine is a pig. I had to do that much dressing with the previous wheel. There's still grain all over it, and I'll give it a bit of a vacuum clean later on after I finish this. But uh, yeah, after using those rubbish grinding wheels, and I'm surprised because I've used that brand for 20 years and never had any problem whatsoever. But this last lot had just been shite. Okay, that's all for now. Back in a video later on. Bye.